The mystery of our human civilization goes back much farther than we can imagine. There are seven root races or evolutionary cycles through which humanity evolves. Each root race is divided into seven minor cycles called sub-races, which are again subdivided into seven branch or family races. These subdivisions are related to the modern concept of races and ethnicities. It must be stressed that the sub-races refer to cultural qualities and not to the level of evolution of the soul. They are different evolutionary stages that humanity as a whole goes through successively. The same individuals that compose the current humanity have been reborn in all their previous root races. The root races are stages in human evolution in the esoteric cosmology of theosophists Helena Petrovna Blavatsky, as described in her book, The Secret Doctrine, in the year 1888. These races existed mainly on now lost continents. According to Blavatsky's writings, there would be seven root races assembled on Earth. Each root race is divided into seven sub races. Only five root races have appeared so far. The sixth root race is expected to emerge in the 28th century. We are presently at the fifth stage, referred to as the Aryans. The word Aryans means noble in Sanskrit. There have been many Earth civilizations, of which we know nothing. These races evolved from ether reality to materiality. So every living organic species of animals and vegetation changes with every new root race. Every sub-race and nation have their circles and stages of developmental evolution repeated on a similar scale. Our race then has as a root race crossed the middle line of the root races and is cycling onward on the spiritual side. The periods of the great root races are divided from each other by great convulsions of nature and by great geological changes. Every root race is separated by a catastrophe or a cataclysm. The basis and historical foundation of the fables woven later on into the religious fabric of every people, whether civilized or savage, under the names of deluges, showers of fire, and like the great flood. Our present continents have been submerged and had the time to reappear again and bear their new groups of mankind and civilizations and that at the first great geological upheaval at the next cataclysm in the series of periodical cataclysms that occur from the beginning to the end of every round our known continents will go down and the ancient continents will rise again It must be remembered that the theosophical concept is that souls develop through an evolutionary process from mineral, plant, animal, and human. There is no transmigration backward, so a human cannot go backward to an animal, or a plant for example. Francis Bacon, whom Theosophy considers to be the legendary count of Saint Germain in his work The New Atlantis in the year 1627 describes a potential future civilization which lives on the land called Ben Salem. The first root race, Polarian. The first root race was ethereal. They were composed of etheric matter. It reproduced by dividing like an amoeba. Earth was still cooling at that time. The first mountain to arise out of the stormy ocean was Mount Peru. They had huge translucent or transparent bodies, a void though somewhat fluid in form, with no bones or organs, and no hair or skin. They slowly grew more solid, but remained ethereal until the end. The race was sexless, and propagated by fission. A large portion of the body separated itself, and grew into a duplicate of its parent, similar to living cells today. In contrast to the huge and highly ethereal cells of the first race, our physical bodies today begin their existence as a microscopic cell or egg. 
a speck of gelatinous protoplasm which slowly hardens and grows into the human form. The second root race, Hyperborean. The second root race lived in Hyperborea. They were semi-astral beings, but grew denser and more opaque with each passing age. Towards its end, it became more gelatinous and filamentoid in structure, and developed the rudimentary beginnings of bones and organs, hair and skin, although still more or less avoid in form they began to show the first outlines of the later human form. However, towards its end, its bodies passed through many curious part animal forms. The second root race has no present day descendants. The first two races were not fully human as they had no self-conscious minds. Their consciousness was like that of someone in a daze or deep daydream. They were guided by spiritual instinct and were mentally much like children. The third root race, Lemurian. According to Theosophists, existed in a large part of what is now the Indian Ocean, including Australia, and extending into the South Pacific Ocean. Its last remnants are the Australian continent, the island of New Guinea, and the island of Madagascar. Modern theosophists sometimes identify Lemuria with the actual ancient supercontinent of Gondwana. Others may refer to it as Mu. Lemuria sank gradually and was eventually destroyed by erupting volcanoes. According to traditional theosophy, the Lemurian root race began 34.5 million years ago in the middle of what was then believed to be the Jurassic. The early third root race was hermaphrodite or androgynous. The Lemurians were the first with physical bodies. They were described as a race of three-eyed giants and inhabited a lost continent of Lemuria. The first three subraces of the Lemurians reproduced by laying eggs, but the fourth subrace, beginning 16 and a half million years ago, began to reproduce like modern humans. The Lemurians were endowed with a third eye at the top of the head it was in fact the first eye, the two front eyes developing later. It is also known as the Eye of Shiva, the Wisdom Eye, or the Diva Eye. It was originally an organ of both physical and spiritual vision. With the development of increasingly material bodies and the separation of the sexes, the eye began to lose its power. It gradually petrified and finally disappeared from the outward anatomy of humans in the middle of the third subrace of the Atlanteans. Some describe the third eye of the Cyclops to be the pineal gland of the brain, or what today is known as the third eye of modern humans. As Lemuria slowly submerged due to volcanic eruptions, the Lemurians colonized the area surrounding Lemuria such as Africa, Southern India, and the East Indies. The fourth root race, Atlantean. The fourth root race starts with a race of two-eyed giant humans, beginning about 60 feet tall, then decreasing to 20 to 30 feet tall, which got progressively smaller until they reach modern human size. The descendants of the Atlanteans, according to traditional theosophy, include those of the Mongolian race, the Malayan race, the American Indian race, as well as some people of what in the 19th and early 20th centuries was called the olive-skinned Mediterranean race. The Civilization of Atlantis during the long period of time when Atlantis was ruled by the Toltecs, the ancestors of the Amerindians, the civilization of Atlantis was at its height. This was the period between 1 million and 900,000 years ago, called the Golden Age of Atlantis. The Atlanteans had many luxuries and conveniences. Their capital city was called the City of the Golden Gates. At its height, it had 2 million inhabitants. 
the Atlanteans had airships powered by the Vril that could seat two to eight people. The downfall of Atlantis started when some of the Toltecs began to practice black magic about 850,000 BC. Corrupted by the dragon, Devatat, remembered as Devadatta, the opponent of Buddha. Although they were opposed by white magicians, the war between the white magicians and the black magicians continued until the end of Atlantis. The masters of the ancient wisdom telepathically warned their disciples, the white magicians, to flee Atlantis in ships while there was still time to get out before the final cataclysm. The Atlantean continent was gradually sinking while the new America was forming. Eventually it left behind a few islands, the bigger of which was Poseidonus, mentioned by Plato in his writings. The fifth root race, Arian. Blavatsky asserted humanity was in the fifth root race, or Indo-European humanity, and like all major new races, received guidance from divine instructors. Since then, a series of migrations have taken place, and many civilizations have come and gone. This age of rapid material progress will last for another 427,000 years. The present-day ethnic group most closely related to the new race is the Kabyle. The bards of the new white root race poetically refer to the new race as being moon-colored. A small group of these Aryan migrants from Atlantis split from the main body of migrants and went south to the shore of an inland sea, a verdant and lush Sahara, where they founded the City of the Sun. The main body of migrants continued onward to an island called the White Island, in the middle of what was then an inland sea in what is now called the Gobi Desert, where they established the City of the Bridge. The City of the Bridge was constructed directly below the etheric city called Shambhala, where Theosophists believe the governing deity of Earth, Sanat Kumara, dwells. Thus the ongoing evolution of the Aryan root race has been divinely guided by the being Theosophists call the Lord of the World. The seeds of the six root race are already being sown, largely in the Americas, and will become fairly numerous towards the end of the Kali Yuga, subraces of the Aryan root race. Blavatsky described the fifth root race with the following words. The Aryan races, for instance, now varying from dark brown, almost black, red brown, yellow, down to the whitest creamy color, are yet all one of the same stock. The fifth round will see the full development of manas, mind, the sixth of bauti, intuitive wisdom, and the seventh of atman, the inner divinity. If we make the great successfully, we shall become like Buddhas. The Sixth Root Race Seal According to Blavatsky, the sixth subrace of the Aryan Root Race will begin to evolve in the area of the United States in the early 21st century. This sixth subrace of the Aryan root race will be called the Australo-American subrace and is believed by Theosophists to be now arising from the Teutonic subrace of the Aryan root race in Australia and in the Western United States. Many individuals of the new subrace will be born in California and its surrounding nearby areas. For example, the Australo-American subrace arising from the Anglo-American, Anglo-Canadian, Anglo-Australian and presumably also the Anglo-New Zealander ethnic groups.
the sixth or Australo-American subrace will possess certain psychic powers, and for this the pituitary body will be developed, thus giving us an additional sense, that of cognizing astral emotions in the ordinary waking consciousness. We may say that in general, the sixth subrace will bring in wisdom and intuition blending all that is best in the intelligence of the fifth subrace and the emotion of the fourth. The seventh root race, trumpet. The last race will have its spiritual deity, or Buddha for example, as every one of its predecessors had, but its adepts will be far higher than any other present race. For among them will abide the future planetary, the Dian Kohen, whose duty it will be to instruct or refresh the memory of the first race or the fifth round men after this planet's future obscuration. By the middle of the seventh race, says an occult prophecy, the struggle of the two conflicting powers between Bauti and Kamamanas will have almost died out. Everything that is irredeemably sinful, wicked, cruel and destructive will have been illuminated and that which is found to survive will be swept away from being. In the seventh root race, humanity will fuse mind and intuition with Atma, the inner spiritual self, and will then be able to function consciously as the higher self, the spiritual triad of Atma, Bodhi Manas. This development and advancement will in the far distant future eventually come out naturally for humanity. This world and the human race will not be destroyed despite the multitude of doomsday sayers who insist that it will. Any apparent end is merely a new beginning and the divine plan and purpose shall carry on unabated as the endless ages roll on.